So good. The Santa Cruz Bullet. We are here. The grand finale is coming soon. Make sure you subscribe so you can see the round table where we compare the Santa Cruz Bullet to the other 12 bikes in our shootout and uh, we see where everything ranks up. The Bullet X01 Coil CC. This was our most expensive bike in the shootout at $11,499. It's a lot to swallow, but there are some options starting down at $7,500. Um, so if you don't want to drop $11,500, you've got a little bit of a savings available to you. So our Santa Cruz Bullet test bike came with a Fox 38 Float Factory E-Specific Fork and a RockShox Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate Rear Shock. Uh, some of our testers felt a little weird about having mismatched Fox RockShox uh, suspension spec. It didn't bother me personally on the trail. I, I know visually it was kind of weird, but once I start riding, I tend to not think about stuff like that. and. Um, no one else really did either once we got out on the trail because they worked together quite well and uh, that Super Deluxe Coil did great and the Fox 38, that's our favorite fork out. So it, it worked well and we were not bummed. So the Bullet is built around the Shimano EP8 drive unit and has an integrated Shimano 630 watt hour battery, which is removable pretty easily out of that down tube um, under that little cover there. SRAM code RSC brakes with a 220 front rotor and a 200 mil rear rotor. We've got a SRAM X01 Eagle 12 speed drivetrain, and this is a mullet or mixed wheel bike, 29 er front, 27.5 in the rear. Schwalbe has once again sponsored our e-bike shootout so that we could have a test tire across the board for all bikes. And we ran the Magic Mary front and a big Betty out back. Uh, Fox, Factory transfer post rounds out the cockpit with some uh, cool Santa Cruz bars and grips. They've got a new, uh, very neatly DI2 integrated handlebar and uh, their new comfy redesigned grips, which we liked quite a bit. So moving on to the geometry on our size large, we've got a 475 mil reach, which if you've watched the rest of our videos know, that is our dream number. I think 475 is the place to be. We've got a couple guys shorter, a couple guys taller, but um, most of us are pretty happy 475 to 480. Uh, some of the taller guys like 485, but solid right there. So it has a 475 millimeter reach, 630 millimeter stack height, 1,267.9 millimeter wheelbase, 449 millimeter chain stays, and a 348 mil bottom bracket height. Uh, the seat tube angle is pretty steep at 77.1 degrees and a 64 degree head tube angle keeps this bike charging down the trail at speed. And this thing is loaded. Yeah. This is loaded with goodies. I mean, you're paying for it. No doubt there. <laughs> but man, what a bike. I immediately felt comfortable. This, like, I don't come from a very big downhill background. My background's more in the XC world. I jump on this bike and I can hold the downhill guys on it. It is supremely confidence inspiring. I do have to say that I noticed on the small square edge bumps, I felt a lot of pedal feedback and I felt like that, it slowed, that it slowed me down. There is a Santa Cruz premium on this bike. It is expensive uh, and even the $7,500 price point entry level bike, it is high and, and that $7,500 bike is like an NX Eagle and select guide RE brakes. It's, it's notably, noticeably higher than other bikes with similar spec out there. So that is a definite critique of ours on this bike. 
Some of the guys, like I said, criticized the mix suspension from a like mental standpoint and visual standpoint, not necessarily from a performance place. So there's that. The wheels, um, it's not exclusive to the bullet, it, but it is something that we've noticed on multiple reserve wheels. They ping a lot. They, um, they make like a weird sound when you really hit them hard uh, on rocks or into like big kind of hold out, you know, harsh compressions. They definitely make some noise. They're still true, they're still round, there's no damage to them. They just talk a lot and they let you know. It kind of makes you feel like you're riding really hard, which is neat, I guess, in some aspects, but um, they do make some noise. And if you want a really silent bike on harsh terrain, the wheels will make a little bit of noise. Some of the riders felt that this wasn't the easiest bike to flick around um, or move. I don't know that I completely agreed personally with that bike, but um, it, it does have a pretty planted and stable feel. I thought I could get it where I needed to go and do what I wanted it to, but you know, I guess on some slower and flatter terrain, it does feel, I don't necessarily want to say that it feels long, but it just feels planted. Maybe does require a little bit more effort to kind of get it to snap around when comparing it to say the Haro, for example. Next. Let's get into what we like about that bike, which is pretty much everything else. Most of our team loved the way the bike looks. The motor tune was on point, loved the 630 battery. Um, EP8 was great, it helped us climb, easily adjustable through that E-Tube app. The suspension tune I liked quite a bit. A couple of testers <clears throat> did have some issues on lower grade trails with you know, rocks that were sticking out a little bit and felt that there was a little bit of pedal feedback. Once you get into steeper train and the speeds go up, that, that goes away in, in our, my opinion. Um, some of the riders though did notice a little bit more feedback and a little bit of hang up, but it was a pretty minor critique. It's definitely way better than what's on the Heckler, uh, for example, but once the bike opens up and you get it on fast, high speed, rough terrain, it really comes alive and just transforms into a beast. Like this bike is insanely fun. In the written review on the website, I pretty much said, I think the best compliment that you can give an e-bike is no longer having to say, I would try that or I would send that if I wasn't on an e-bike. And that to me is why this bike is one of my absolute favorites in the roundup and um, I think Santa Cruz did a great job because I can get on it and instantly feel like I'm just riding a mountain bike that helped me get up to the top faster. It's predictable in corners. The traction is great. It jumps very well. I think the ideal candidate for this bike would be an aggressive rider um, or somebody that maybe lives in a rough chunky area that wants to have more confidence and um, be able to go out and just kind of ride hard and push their own limits, feel some confidence, feel some stability, and really let them kind of get to the next level as a rider. If you are already a skilled, competent rider and you love shredding trails, this thing is also going to be a great option because it doesn't hold you back. It really lets you visualize what you would want to do and you can do it. So um, th that was definitely one of the big things that we liked about this bike. You gotta pay for it though. Um, so that being said, the Santa Cruz Bullet, if you don't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for our next episode and the grand finale. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.